In this video, you will learn how to edit the matrix filter effect in DaVinci Resolve 17.4. We will modify the default settings of the matrix effect as we create a folding binary digit animation. Inside your edits window, go to effects. Under toolbox, select effects and go to find fusion composition. Click and drag one of these filters to your edits timeline. By default, the Fusion Composition clip will play for a duration of 5 seconds at 24 frames per second. If you wish to change the duration of this clip, select the Fusion Composition Edit, hold in Control and press D. Use Command instead of Control if you are a Mac user. And type in the new duration that you wish to have in the middle box available in the Change Clip Duration window. Select Change when you are done. Right click on your Fusion Composition clip and go to Open in Fusion page. Inside your Fusion window, go to Select Effects, go to Select Templates, use the search box at the top to find the Matrix template. Click and drag this to your Nodes panel. Go to click on the grey box to the right of your Matrix node and drag your mouse cursor over to the yellow arrow beside Media Out 1. To make a connection, select either left or right view underneath Media Out 1 so that you see a preview of the effect in your Fusion window. Double click on the Matrix 1 node to reveal all node components which make up this effect. First we will look at how to change the speed of the folding digits and to also change the amounts that we see on screen at any time. Select P emitter, go to Inspector, double click on the P emitter header to reveal the variables. Changing the number variable underneath emitter will affect the number of digit chains that you see on screen. I've reduced it here for example to 10 to decrease the number of folding alphanumeric characters. What if you wish to change the speed in which these digit chains fall? Under velocity, increase the velocity value to make the leading characters in each chain fall faster. If I double the speed to 0.6 for example, in the preview of this clip, the falling chains seem further away due to the increased speed as they are falling quicker before the 3D camera view can get closer to these. We will look at how to change the 3D camera's position in this particular animation effect later on in this tutorial so that you can position the camera closer to the faster falling digit chains. Note how after I've increased the velocity of these falling digit chains, the space between each character has increased. How can we reduce the gap so that each character appears close to one another just as we saw in the original default matrix effect animation sequence? Select P Spawn, double click on the P Spawn header underneath Inspector and under Velocity increase the Velocity Transfer value. If I increase this value to 0.5 for example, the characters in each chain appear closer to one another to fix our original problem created when we increased the speed of our falling chains. Before demonstrating the next technique, I will first restore the values for the P-emitter node for its number value of 30 and its velocity of 0.3. I will also apply the default velocity transfer setting of 0.0, .0 to the P-spawn node. Avoid using the reset button in any of your nodes for this matrix effect otherwise you will lose the default settings applied to create this particular template. What if you wanted to change the text colour? Select text inside the matrix frame, go to inspector, double click on text, and under text, double click on the colour box. For this new binary digit animation, I will add the following hexadecimal code, hashtag 07C9FF, to create a light blue shade for my text. Click OK. Font settings can also be adjusted underneath the text header. Now we will look at how you can change the letters or numbers displayed in your digit chains. With your text node still selected, select modifiers. Underneath controls, remove the A symbol and replace this with either a 0 or 1. Now select the substitute characters at the bottom of your control panel and type in 0 and 1 so that only these digits appear when your animation plays. 
we will now look at how you can change the position of the 3D camera in your animation. Select Camera 3D, double click on the Camera 3D header under Inspector. The higher the angle of view value, the further away the digit chains will appear. Note how the focal length value will also decrease at the same time. In order to generate the camera movement, select Transform. The zooming effect is created by the adjustment of the Translation Z value. If we go to the first frame of this animation, by selecting the left arrow to the side of the keyframe diamond icon, to go to frame 0. The starting position of this 3D camera on the Z dimension is 5. If I change this value to 10 for example, and preview the animation, we can see that the digit chains start falling at a greater distance from the camera. And if we go to the last keyframe added at the very end of our animation clip, we can see that by default the value for Z goes from 5 at the start to 0 at the end. If you wish for your camera to approach the falling digit chains at a greater speed, we can decrease this value, for example to minus 5. And if I restore the value of translation Z on the first frame to 5, the increased distance between both translation Z values on the first and last frame of this particular animation effect mean that the zoom speed has increased slightly as the 3D camera has to cover a greater distance on the Z dimension. Translation Y on the other hand adjusts the vertical positioning of the 3D camera, increase this to move up and decrease to move downwards, and Translation X changes the horizontal positioning of the 3D camera. If you wish to change the positioning of these keyframes so that you can for example make the zoom effect start later on in your animation, go to Spline, select Z offset underneath camera 3D under matrix 1. Adjust the scroll bars by going towards the left for both the bottom and top two ones so that you can see the keyframes which make up this animation. The two boxes representing the keyframes here for translation Z can be clicked and dragged to change the points on your animation where these apply. So for example if I click on the first keyframe here and drag my mouse cursor towards the right the Translation Z modifications will now no longer start at the very beginning of my animation and instead there will be a delay until frame 140. Ensure that the value in the box under the bottom right corner of the chart is consistent with that which you have chosen for your Translation Z variable so that your camera 3D position remains the same. What if you wish to change the angle in which the digit chains flow? I will reset the speed of which the 3D camera moves in the video by applying the default settings to the translation Z variable in the camera 3D node. The first keyframe will be placed at the start of the clip and the translation Z variable here will be set to 5. The final keyframe at the end of this clip will be set as 0. Select the P emitter tool. If we change velocity to 0, we are presented with an animation where the binary digits float towards the viewer, obscuring some of the spawning digits that would appear after the initial character. If we change the velocity value to a negative one, such as minus 0.2 for example, we can see the binary digits going upwards. And in order to make the digits flow horizontally, you can also adjust the angle value. Before the next chapter, I will store the original velocity value of 0.2, angle to minus 90, and number to 20. How can you set the characters to rotate in your animation? Select text, go to layout, select rotation, go to the start of your animation at frame 0 by adjusting the frame pointer underneath your fusion timeline. Select the keyframe diamond icon next to rotation Y so that this is red. Advance forward by one second of screen time on your fusion timeline in this case here, since we initially identified the frames per second rate as 24, I will go through to the 23rd frame. Double click on the zero in rotation Y and type in 360. Use minus 360 for rotation Y if you wish for your digits to rotate in the opposite direction. To get the rotation animation replaying throughout your video clip, select Spline. Under text, ensure that Y is ticked Deselect the camera 3D options by clicking twice. Zoom out on your grid once again by adjusting the top and bottom scroll bars by dragging these towards the left. This time select both keyframes by
by clicking and highlighting and choose set loop which appears underneath this grid. We will now look at how you can add a gentle glow to the falling characters in your animation. Select render 3D, hold in shift and press space, use the search box at the bottom to find the soft glow tool, select this and go to click on add. If you are unable to see this particular tool in your matrix frame, click and drag to expand the sides. Select Soft Glow 1. Under Inspector, change Gain to 1.1 to reduce the intensity of the glow slightly and to spread the glow effect slightly, increase glow size from 10 to 20. And to increase the length of the chains that appear in your animation, select P Spawn and increase the lifespan to make each of the characters remain on screen for longer, which will enhance the length of your falling digit chains. The amount of time it will take for the tail of each falling chain to disappear will increase, and so the length of each of these falling chains will appear longer. The background music in this video is provided by the Proud Channel sponsor Audio, a link to the company's website, and also a link that will enable a discounted purchase of a lifetime supply of music and sound effects can be found in this video's description box. Thank you very much for watching, I hope that video was useful to you. If you enjoyed the content and wish to be notified about future uploads on this channel, please like, share and subscribe. Join me soon for another video, take care.